Hi, I am Dr. Ben Newman, and I'm a coronavirologist uh, with a lot of years studying these viruses behind me. And so let's try to use that to answer your next questions. All right, so the next question is from, shoot, it's either Roni or Ronnie. I don't know, one of those two is wrong, the other one's right, you have to tell me. Uh, so I don't mess it up again. I'll try to learn. Yeah, that's the best you can say, right? Um, let's see. So, question starts. I don't have a spleen since 1984. Yeah, okay. That happens. People get in uh, car accidents, people have certain diseases, people get hit really hard in football games, and yeah, spleen ruptures, you have to take the spleen out, uh, because yeah, otherwise you die. So, that is a thing. Um, uh, the reason why that's going to be significant in COVID-19 is because that is just the largest gathering place uh, where cells from what you would call the immune system. It's just like a big jamboree in there and you've got different zones with all the, you know, the cool kids and whatever, the ones that just came in. They've all got their different little areas and they mingle. Oh, they mingle a lot inside the spleen. And so before infection, what you see are all of these really nice little defined zones with all the proper cells sort of clustering together and talking to each other, basically. And when you get an infection, you will have a lot of other cells coming in and showing interesting new bits of virus or whatever you've got. And you just get this total disorganization. Everything goes crazy. The party basically really gets started in there. And then they go off and uh, do wonderful things to hopefully keep you safe. Now, the spleen is not the only part of the body where you would find white blood cells and where you can get white blood cells running into each other in such a way as to generate immunity. It's just the biggest one, and uh, it's one of the easier ones to study, I would say, because it's just so much happening in one spot. So, to finish the question, I'll be about three weeks past my second Moderna shot when I have antibody lab work done. This is really cool. So you are doing a science experiment right there. And so the question is going to be, yeah, what is my antibody titer after, um, uh, yeah, uh, an individual who does not have a spleen after vaccination with an mRNA vaccine? That is something where we do not, I, I have not seen um, enough data. You'd have to have like I don't know, a couple hundred people in exactly the same situation, and then you'd have to match them for like age and everything else um, uh, in order to sort of compare people without a spleen, spleen to people with a spleen in terms of how much antibody response they get. I am really interested to see what the result is. I suspect it'll be uh, pretty good because these vaccines will hit a lot of dendritic cells and those dendritic cells will go off and talk to a lot of other white blood cells. I just think they're not going to be doing it in the spleen. They're going to be doing it in all the other little lymph nodes and various other parts of your body. And so, yeah, may take a little longer, maybe a little bit less efficient, but I think you're probably going to get there. So that is my guess that I'm putting it in a little sealed envelope here, ready for uh, the Oscar presentation. And uh, yeah, very curious. You're going to have to tell me because in this case, you're doing the experiment and uh, that's, that's what I do. I, I look at experiments that people do and try to learn from them. So yeah, very interesting question. And uh, boy, the answer is going to be even more interesting. Um, uh, let's see. The last part of the question is what other lab work, um, if any, could I add besides antibodies? So would you suggest? The only other things you could do would be to look for B cells. And honestly, if you have a good antibody response, you will have a good like memory B cell response probably. Um, or look for um, uh, T cells. You could look for the Th1, Th2 balance. But all these things are really like immunologist questions. They would tell you a little bit more what's going on. But if you have got to the point where you have a pretty good antibody response, that seems to be a reasonable proxy for a good immune response. And so I would say only if the antibodies are negative would you consider doing uh, some other kind of assay. You'd look for um, uh, white blood cells, various types of white blood cells that are able to react to the spike protein, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, if the antibody response is okay, um, then you're probably home free. So Best of luck, and uh, yeah, I think this is going to be all right. That's, that's my guess, yeah. Um, thank you very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.